Just kidding, of course we're gonna watch another fucking one, yeah. Obviously. Last night on Master Chef. No even a fucking question, yeah. Truck challenge put Stacy. No even a fucking question, yeah. As her plan to get rid of Monty was on course. Or is David gonna freak out? Such no, Felix child. never got eliminated. It was a debate. Bro, someone said, I thought Felix got eliminated. Why? Did you fucking end it when I uh when I masterfully paused it to call the top of the hour ad break right before the debate? No. That was one of the most incredible debates that that uh that, that that Gordo was ever engaged in. But when Monty passed the pressure test with flying colors, those were incredible. Thank you so much. Anna was the one eliminated. Anna, please put your apron on your station. Tonight, a mystery box with a mystery guest. Go get him, Graham. It's badass. As the contestants cook alongside a Michelin star. Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, okay. No spoilers, no spoilers. I skipped it. I skipped it. Dude, I get so invested and then I forget to skip the spoilerinos. Okay, no spoilers, no spoilers. Safe, safe, safe. We're safe, we're safe, we're safe. Good morning. It's down at 11 and we're the best home cooks of America. How does she do welcome. it? Welcome, 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 welcome. How does she get better every episode? Sometimes I look at these mystery boxes and wonder, what would a true master chef do with those ingredients? Oh my gosh. Well, today, we're gonna find out. No way, dude, that's awesome. We have invited a Michelin star chef, a true visionary in the world of food, to cook alongside of you all. Woo! Sweet. Go get him, Graham. Please welcome, all the way from Chicago, a legend of modern cuisine. Thank you, Unicorn Savage. Master chef, Graham Elliott. What? 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 That's crazy. That was very cool. Good for that. That was a cool transformation. They did a great job with the edit. Do we know what we're in for with this guy? He's one of the most talented chefs on the planet. Is he? Don't worry. You guys aren't. Wait, is he actually one of the most talented chefs on the planet? Do we, is that for real? I, I don't know anything about Graham, so I, I really don't know. I've never heard of him before the show, and I've never heard of Bastianis before the show either. But let me tell you something. Where are those cuffs? They're gone. That's kind of fucked. Graham le lost his power level. He's still got the, he's still got the fucking no religion sevens, okay? R slash atheism sevens up top. He's got that fire dome, okay? He's still looking like a peacock. He's got the sexy-ass chef's drip. He, he looks great in that, for sure. Makes him look hotter than he was before, even. Uh, but, you know, he's got the co cowboy boots, but those aren't boot cut. Someone actually changed his, uh, his, his entire aesthetic here. Or maybe the cuffs are like weights, and he took the weights off for this episode aren't competing against me. That would be totally unfair. We just wanted to give you an amazing opportunity to see what a true professional chef could do in one hour without any advantage of any preparation. And no, for the record, I don't know what's in the boxes. And remember, the person with the best dish will get a huge advantage in the next challenge. That's badass, man. Chef Elliot, please take to your station. Aye, aye. Woo! Right. Are you ready to see what's under those amazing boxes? Yes. Yes, chef. One, two, three. Wow. Whoa. I couldn't believe my eyes. I see what looks like a roadkill. You have the most amazing rabbit. The rabbit. Cape gooseberries. Purple Brussels sprouts. Bro, Tucky they're going mushrooms. ham on this Rams. season. Ramps. Forbidden rice, chorizo, ginger. Wow. And a heavy whipping. What the fuck is forbidden rice, bro? What the absolute fuck is a forbidden rice, dude? Cream. Why in is addition, it forbidden? You have access to the stable box for other ingredients. I'm definitely going to be in the top three, and I'm feeling very confident now. Just knowing that I have a rabbit in front of me and I could do it three, four, or five ways. 
You've got 60 Orochimaru's minutes to create rice a technique. stunning dish. And your time starts now. Going in this mystery box challenge, the person to beat is still Becky. Because she's been in the top three of all the mystery box challenges. If I can kick Becky's ass, then that means I'm that much better. Do you think a lot of them have used that before? Probably not. Butchering's very difficult, very small, very delicate. Overcook it, dry. A lot of jeopardy here. Ah, what do I do? I would make a really nice rabbit pot pie. I would make an incredible frittata and roast a whole rabbit around the mm. uh, frittata, like yep. a porchetta stuffed with mm. eggs. Black rice is also called the forbidden or emperor's rice. is gaining popularity for its levels of antioxidants and superior nutritional value. Forbidden rice earned its name because it was once preserved for the Chinese emperor to ensure his health and longevity and forbidden to anyone else. Thank you. Black rice is a range of rice types and spe species from the Oriza sativa, some of which are glu glutinous rice. Black rice is also known as forbidden rice in ancient China since it only those belonging to the upper class could afford to eat it. Damn, we learned so much rice lore just now. Rice masters. The whole idea of putting Graham in the kitchen with us, cooking side by side, is really to show us how a real chef thinks. It's intimidating. Graham can possibly put something up that just makes us look stupid. What if he Mike fucks Graham. up? Yes, yeah. How are you feeling? Amazing. I can't wait to see what you are going to be cooking over the next 55 minutes in yeah. comparison to what they're doing. Nothing crazy, literally. I mean, it's a mystery box. It's being able to, uh, you know, utilize these ingredients to the best that they can. Oh! Just kidding. Oh. Just trying to scare you guys. So what's the difference between the way you... Dude. I bet Joe can't use knives like that. That was a good debate, Graham. You're such a silly goose. Look at how much of an... How much of a better mood he's in when he's around food and he's like actually cooking his shit. This man loves his shit. You run your station and some of these amateur cooks. Like, what do you do differently? Why are you more efficient? I think the biggest thing is to constantly clean, wipe down. I like to have my knife right here, exactly where I can use it all the time. Being able to just grab and go. Good Great. Luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a little intimidated. I've never butchered a rabbit. I don't know what the best way is to cook it, so I'm kind of trying two different ways, hoping that one of them is the right way. <laughs> Josh. Hey, Chef. What are you doing? I'm doing a rabbit paella. Rabbit paella. And where is the rice? The rice is right here, and I don't even know what forbidden rice is. Oh, <laughs> He said, oh, shit. Oh, God, how am I going to make this black rice work? It's going to turn everything else black. The carrots, the chorizo, the ramps just ruin the colors that I plan for my dish. So I want to just talk to you about the rice first. Good luck. Right now, I'm, I'm getting the stock reduced. I'm going to make a sauce with this. I'm going to either stuff the uh, leg, or I'm just going to sear off the loins. So I'm going to do two different things and see which one tastes the best. 40 minutes gone, 20 minutes I, to go. I, uh, Hi, Mike. I responded to Ethan. I said, pull My up any time, King. I grab it too all the time, so I've got that going right now. Just backup plan is I'm going to pan sear a leg, finish it off, serve it with rice. You sit in the middle. When are we going to see you break through? Today, oh, Chef. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Nice and tasty. So nice to see Graham. I've learned some interesting information. Graham's dad was in the Navy. September 19th is officially Graham Elliott Day in Chicago. What? And he has three kids, one of which is named Jedediah. Jedediah? Yo, hey, yo, that's crazy. That's a, that's a wild name a for a child. Beautiful. And it looks like he's utilizing every time. Especially a child born ever. recently. That's really what a true chef looks like in the kitchen. 58 minutes gone, two minutes to go, guys. Yeah, but he's a Navy dishes. brat. That makes sense why he was like, Yo, it, you know, guys. Come on, put it on the plate. thank you people for their service Man, I and shit. I do not know how to plate it. Oh, clarity and vision. Come on. What is he doing? Graham, he has nothing on the plate yet. Last 60 seconds. Graham, if this dish is not completed, you are leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Graham, where are you going? He's going. Graham. Graham! Oh, my God. Imagine they sub Last him out. 60 seconds. 
He has nothing on the plate yet. Graham, where are you going? He's going. Graham, do not give up. Come on, Graham! With the clock ticking down, our home cooks and master chef Graham Elliott are racing to complete their dishes before time runs out. He's got something on the fridge. What is that? He's, He's done, done a dessert, dessert as well. Oh, my God. 90 Please. seconds, nothing, and all of a sudden he comes out with a bloody dessert. And now, look at it. 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh, he just had to flex on him. <laughs> he had six, to flex on him. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Hands in the air, Graham Elliott. Woo! Well done. Woo! Woo! They look incredible. It smells fantastic. Chef Graham, please, come up with your dishes. Wow. It looks beautiful. Thank you, Chef. I mean, it looks like a dish that could be planted in any three Michelin star restaurant anywhere in the world. It looks stunning. I appreciate it. I would like all of you to come down and have a look at this, please. You've got to. Oh, my goodness. Did a carrot puree and a salad of different shaved, marinated, pickled carrots, and utilized all the parts. Bro, he did not cheat with a dessert. He could have... He was the only one who was able to fucking literally make a dessert as well on the side in that same time period, while the other people were, like, barely fucking putting it up, like, barely putting up their dishes. So that's not technically a cheat. ...the rabbit. So I've got the loin, the rack, the kidney, the bacon, or the belly flap, and oh my some God. of the liver. Oh my I God. also did a fennel panna cotta with a little bit of candied fennel branch, fennel fronds, and cape gooseberries. Wow. Gorgeous. I'm looking at Graham's dish, and it's just beautiful. All the colors are popping. It's really like... Oh, you didn't have to do that, okay? You, you didn't have to do that to everybody. You know what I mean? We get it. Like, you're a Michelin star chef. He's just so cracked. I feel like they did this. Yeah, where's the forbidden rice, Aiden? Good question, Aiden. Where is the forbidden rice? Oh, no, 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 no. He was too busy flexing on him. Where's the forbidden rice, dude? Uh-oh. Art on a plate. Well, that's yeah. that. Great. Back to your stations. Once the contestants have tasted Graham's dish, oh, you don't have to our use the rice? Chef judges now take one final look at the home cook's dishes before deciding on tonight's top three. The winner of the mystery box will receive a major advantage in the next round. The first dish we'll be tasting had great plating, really nice execution, had that wow factor, and it looked amazing. That dish belongs to Frank. Well done. Really well done. He's a rabbit pasta. I look at Frankie's dish and it looks rustic as hell. There's like a bunch of lines on the plate and a bunch of the same colors. There's no diversity. Talk us through it, please. Okay, so you have the tenderloins that I crusted with. Bro, that's fucking ridiculous. Like you got, you got judges commending the person you can't be turning around and be like, it's actually dog shit. Fuck you, Tali. What the hell do you know, bitch? Caraway seeds, lemon zest, Nothing, some that's ginger, what. You know nothing. And I just pan roasted them. The leg was deboned, pounded out, and then I stuffed it with the top of the ramps, a little bit of chorizo. Pounding out the leg and stuffing them, and that's a bold move. It looks great. It tastes great, and everything works. Delicious. Thank really you so much. Job. Well done. Wow. Frank you know, you is a god, sauce, dude. You can just tell by looking at it that it's got the right balance. It's not over reduced. What you know about cooking, you're just ordering food right at your front door anyway. Dude, I literally cook every day, dude. I prepare my meals and cook them every fucking day. That's such a funny diss. Like, it's such an automatic, like, oh, he's a streamer, so he must be ordering food every day kind of fucking diss. Because I straight up fucking make it every day. And if I don't make it, it's still the... It's still the chicken that I make that my mom cooks. It's not extracted. It doesn't have a skin. At least you could have done is be like, you cook the same meal every day. You fucking don't know anything other than chicken. I have two speeds. I have two speeds. I either fucking make, uh, you know, curry chicken. I, I, I'm gonna, if I'm in a curry chicken mood, I go for curry chicken for months or Mediterranean chicken for months. Not it smelled great. It's 
really, really good. Thanks, Joe. My check is at the top. That's not true, lol W. Ugh, lol W user. Get the fuck out of here. The fact that you did that leg. Cool. Good job. Thanks, man. Really good. Really good. Well done. Disgusting. Thank you. The second home cook who made it into the top three, they used the rabbit legs. They used the forbidden rice. And the cook on the rabbit looks really perfect. It really impressed us. That person is... Cowboy Mike. I was just about to say, if it's not Cowboy Mike, it's fucked up. He should know how to make a rabbit. Yeehaw! Top three, baby. First time for everything, Chef. What do you have here? I did the rice and a little bit of rabbit stock. I started with the idea that I was going to do a stew. I knew about 20, 30 minutes into it that wasn't going to work. So I incorporated a little bit of chorizo, a little bit of ramp into rice, sauteed that for a minute, and then cooked it off with the rabbit. What we love about this dish is the caramelization. And when I cut it open, it should be like this kind of very perfect white, but there should still be able to see the moisture in the rabbit leg. Right. Think you got it? I hope so. Wow. That's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> really good. Thank he you. should know how to fuck that up, you know what I mean? He's a cowboy. Very very Thank you. Moist. Yeah, very good. Listening, it's shiny. Isn't that what cowboy cowboys, isn't that what cowboys make? I hope so. <laughs> you absolutely cooked the leg beautifully, which is the hardest cut. What did I tell you, dude? I told you, motherfuckers. It literally is all about just, you know, low expectations, just gliding on. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the worst. Just like, just, just edge by every fucking time on the first couple of rounds. And then you start popping off. You start showing up. Okay. Start showing up around like season uh, three, episode 10. And then you're just fucking flapping and never forget. Yes. Presentation is key. It's the most important part. You really nailed it. Thank you, Chef. Good job. Much. Thank you. Great job, Mike. Thank you. Good. We're going to be tasting one more dish. This dish was put together with finesse. It was oozing professionalism. Congratulations. <laughs> Becky. Oh, yeah. Ooh, well done. Becky. Becky. I am so sick of hearing Becky's name. It's so annoying, and I'm actually sick and tired of, like, Becky. Welcome back to the top three. Oh, thank you, Chef. You've never won a mystery box yet. No. After I butchered it, I took the saddle and the two tenderloins and the upper arms, and I put those in the pressure cooker with a little bit of chicken stock and some of the rendered chorizo. I've had a rabbit, but never like a whole rabbit. ass rabbit leg. I feel like that's a weird... Perfection. It's got to be gamey, no? I, I don't know. But the glaze was the one that got us because it was almost like it had been cooking for three or four hours. It's delicious. I mean, it really is. Oh, my God, thank you. It's restaurant quality, um, without a shadow of doubt. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Not at all very delicate. When you cut into this, I mean, you can see how juicy this is. Yeah. Does that make you happy? I'm very happy. Me too. This might be your lucky rabbit's foot. I hope so. No, it's soft meat, very tender. I couldn't believe the leg. You guys are amateurs. And today you cook like pros. It's the best feeling in the world is to have these guys who make dishes like Graham did tell you this is impressive, this is an amazing dish. The winner has a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. I'm a bit of an underdog. I think I kind of woke everybody up a little bit and they realized that cowboy can cook. The dish that stood out to all three of us. Wait, hold up. People are saying they raise rabbits like veal. They farm rabbits so they don't move around too much. So if you had a, so if you had a rabbit in the wild, it would be gamey, but rabbits that are farmed or not? Is that what you... It's like, it's surprising that rabbits... I feel like rabbits would not be fucking 
moist or tender, I feel like. Anyway. This is my third time being in the top three. Hopefully they can see how much I want this and how much this means to me. Well done. Congratulations goes to... The winner has a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. In today's Mystery Box Challenge, the top three dishes have already been tasted. Frank's seared loin and stuffed rabbit leg. Mike's pan-seared rabbit legs with rice. And Becky's braised rabbit leg with chorizo. Congratulations goes to... Becky. Oh, oh Becky. come on. Give Cowboy Mike a shot, dude. Finally. <laughs> Third time lucky. Third time a charm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Great finesse. The balance. We were struggling to, to fault anything. Are you ready? I am so ready. To take on board your huge advantage. Yes. Let's go. Congratulations. Okay, well okay let's see. Yeah, this uh, is... <laughs> Chad, this is going to be the hug and kiss advantage, okay? Great job. Trust. Let's go. Trust. Oh, she's jumping up and down and screaming and hollering and pumping her fist and all that stuff. And, you know, it was ridiculous. Oh, my God! I can't believe it! Looks God amazing. damn, bro. Chill. Why no. are they so mad? It's really good. I'm really shocked you weren't out there for real. Unfound territory for you. As the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, Becky is now in control of the elimination test. The theme of the challenge has been selected by the judges. At the end of this elimination test, at least one home cook will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Today's challenge is all about the tools of the trade. Oh, okay. The first piece of equipment is Italian, and it's rock hard. Oh, no. It is? What? The pizza stone. Oh. So if you don't have a pizza oven that goes to 900 degrees, you really should uh -huh. have a pizza stone. Because it retains heat and moisture, it can deliver you a crispy crust pizza in your home kitchen. The second piece of equipment comes from China. It's used for frying, poaching, searing, smoking, and so much more. A wok. Goaded. OK. And the last piece of kitchen equipment is used to make some of the world's most favorite foods. Oh, I hope, I hope it's some fucking dumb British shit. It's like, it's a haggis bag. <laughs> Gordo stuck with his cuisine for no reason. It's French fries, onion rings, calamari. Oh, tempura. fryer. It is an incredible fryer. Now, Becky, you have no immunity today. You will be participating in this challenge, but it comes with good news. First of all, you get to choose which piece of equipment oh, you'd shit. like to use. And then you'll decide on which piece of equipment your opponents will use. This advantage is not something that comes easily. So I need to choose something that I'm going to be familiar with, that I'm going to be able to create a great dish with. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, she got the she got that no immunity advantage, dude. Great. <laughs> yeah, you got no immunity. And uh, that's pretty much it, actually. That's the only advantage you get. What's the piece of equipment that you think you can excel with? I'm going to choose for myself the deep fryer. The deep fryer, wow. For your fellow competitors, mm -hmm. what are you giving them? I'm choosing this device because it's going to create maybe some more issues for some of the chefs that they haven't dealt with before. And for that, I'm choosing. Back to the station. Don't tell me she chose walk, dude. No shot. Oof. No. A master chef must be able to master every piece of equipment there is. Dude, the wok is straight up the easiest thing to fucking cook with. I hope it's a pizza stone. We showed Becky three kitchen tools. Since she does not have immunity today, her advantage was choosing which piece of equipment she'll be working with and which one the rest of you will use. So today I picked for myself the deep fat fryer. And here's what Becky picked for the rest of you. A pizza stone. Mark. Wow. 
Oh, look at that cowboy man. He's like, what is that Italian food? I don't, I don't eat that ethnic stuff. What am I gonna do with a pizza stone in under an hour? I'm pretty sure Becky wants me out of the competition. Becky wants everybody out of the competition. You have six minutes That's ethnic foods. I've never had that. Amazing dish utilizing the pizza stone. And for at least one of you, it'll be the last dish you ever cook in the Master Chef kitchen. Wow. Your time starts now. Frank is just clapping. To create something using the pizza stone. It does not have to be pizza. You can just cook on it. I still can't find the stupid What? Olive. I can't remember my recipe for a damn pizza dough. I'm scrapping the pizza. I'm cooking lobster. Wow. Interesting one, this one. Mm-hmm. I think that Becky made a very aggressive and strategic move in choosing the pizza stone for everybody. I mean, yeah. certainly, she's going to set herself apart from the yeah. rest. Of yeah. The first thing now is getting that dough on, activating the yeast, mm -hmm. and getting that dough working. I would make a stunning pizza. I would roll that dough so thin, I'd put it through the machine, almost like a pasta dough. Oh, really? So it literally crisps and bubbles, mm -hmm. and keep that nice, crisp edge to the pizza. Mm. Right, Becky. Hello, Chef. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing a tempura style shrimp with a Thai coconut broth. We're down to 11. Yeah. Oh, my God. Who's leaving the Master of Kitchen next? Uh, I think Cowboy Mike. Cowboy Mike? Yeah. Why? Uh, I just don't know if he has that passion to be a Master Chef. I know that he loves cooking and I know he has a passion for food, but being a Master Chef is so much more than that. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Bro, Mike, what's going on? Chef, you, Bro you know, you know, Frank just closed his eyes and then brrr, mainframe downloaded, you know, again, intergenerational epigenetic, uh, uh, sequencing from the DNA is just, he knows how to fucking slap that stone pizza, uh, that stone pizza fucking uh, shit immediately. He's like, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do with this. That's right. You're gonna make a lobster? Roasted lobster tails with a... You're gonna roast the lobster tail on this? I'm gonna start it in a little bit of water and then throw it in there with a little garlic and butter and then wow. make sure So there's 11 of you here. Who's going home today? David Martinez is going home. David today. Martinez. Great, thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. I think they're... They're like... I think Joe is a little scared of uh, homie over here. <coughs> like, they don't really... Like, normally... Can you imagine, like, a, like a tiny brown woman? doing that move i feel like joe bastianich would be like locked and loaded what the fuck do you think you're doing you're disrespecting the italian heritage you know what i mean like he he's a little afraid of big boy here guys something's burning in the oven guys what is that oh it's uh i made a smoker made a smoker it looks like you made a mess so no pizza. No pizza. That's that's where my mind was. I just said I don't want to make a pizza. Taste that. Monty, where's so, your dough? My dough is in the oven already. Really? What are you making? I'm making a soda bread. I make it for my son all the time. A soda bread? Well, I'm gonna make a pureed carrot soup what? with a touch of ginger and lemon zest. Soup and soda bread. Yeah. Good all luck. Right. Thank you. Thank what you. the fuck? 15 minutes to go. Bro, what is that? Am I like not white enough to know what that is? What the fuck is a soda bread, dude? And like, and 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 what peas and carrot soup? What the, what is happening? Why is she? Why does she choose like whatever the most disgusting sounding things that she could make today? Oh. Tanya. We are all over the place. What are you doing? It's Irish? I have this roasted vegetable dish. Seared off my lamb, finished it in the oven. The lamb is still raw in the middle. Yes, sir. And then you're going to fry it in a pan. Anything you've got in terms of flavor from that stone yes, is gone. Uh-oh. Oh, she's gone. 55 minutes gone. Five minutes to go. Wait to see David Martinez's dish. Yeah. He's making a sauce out of 150 juniper berries in the broth. Cowboy Mike, I think, like Martinez, is all over the place. Yeah. I think he's in a complete pack. I love that the Irish are coming out of the woodwork to be like, it's Irish, what the fuck? It's like, dog, you see me shitting on British cuisine. Like, don't make me fucking change the crosshairs over to Irish cuisine, which also is similarly non-existent and just beer, okay? Don't make me fucking do it.
I love the Irish, but you know, I'm sorry. That part of the planet, anyone that's been like invaded by the Danes, it's always their cuisine is just like boiled ham and, and boiled chicken and potatoes. Panic. I think that the, he didn't know how to make a pizza dough. No. Very nervous for him. Monty, he threw the carrots on there. And she's now roasting the carrots and blend them into a carrot soup. I mean, completely all over the place. I'm deaf. Ah! What was that? What the hell was that? Uh, this thing. Did you put water in the oven? What is in there? Oh, no. Oh, no, not my oh, queen. What happened? No! You burnt the bread? Monty just burnt her bread. If she can salvage it, she'll be good. But she looks no! like she's in trouble. <laughs> No, no, not Monty. Come on, we like Monty. Five minutes to go. Not going home today. Uh -oh. What happened? You burnt the bread? It looks pretty good. Go, go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow. Holy freak out, Batman. This is my main dish. She would. I can't just present them a bowl. Monty is the type of person to say, holy freak out, Batman. That's so perfect. Gosh, she's, she's perfect. Like, I'm the type of dude to tell you it's top of the hour every hour. You know what I mean? Time for a six second ad break. And she's the type of person to say, you know, holy freak out, Batman. I'm also the type of dude to tell you, like, you can avoid those ads uh, if you are lucky and uh, get gifted a sub, you know, or, or a gift sub recipient. Or if you're not lucky, you just make your own luck by subscribing for five dollars or for free. You know what I'm saying? The type of type of guy I am. Here's the woman at break now. Oof. Full soup. For God's sake! Ninety seconds to go. <laughs> what was that? Tali, where we at? Got my pizza. Thank in the you, oven. Goldie Hopefully Bat, can, like, for the five hundred subs. Fast enough. Okay, why don't you try to clean your station? I know, I know. All right, come on, clean up, clean up. Everyone wants to make the top ten. The pressure is definitely on. Hurry up, guys! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Well done. Good. That was a fascinating 60 minutes. Right, let's start. Mike, please come forward. I'm not proud of my dish, but I hope that I've done enough with the pizza stone that I can kind of just skimp by on this one. I would have loved to have given you a pizza. Really? If you told me to guess what piece of equipment you were given to cook with, I think we'd be here for hours before sure. I ever got to the idea of a pizza stone. I wish that I could remember my dough ratios for pizza, because I, I would have done a pizza. The lobster, when it flakes like that, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's like you found a way to make it, like, dehydrated. I mean, you know someone's leaving today, right? Yeah, I, mean, I do. I went to high school in Powder Springs, Georgia, a few years before this aired. Cowboy Mike is 100% LARPing. Yeah, no shit. It's an affluent Atlanta suburb, Cobb County. There are no cows and a cowboy. And a cowboy, no one wears cowboy hats except old Latino men. Yeah. Listen, I know. Anyone and everyone from the South that fucking rocks cowboy hats like that aggressively, especially like implying that they brought it on a fucking plane, you know, they're LARPing. Of course he's LARPing, but it's the, it's LARP city. It's a facade. I just blanked out. All right. Sorry, chef. How can a stone beat you? No excuse, it just did, chef. This is your worst performance. You didn't remember a dough recipe of any kind? I just drew a blank. Yeast, flour, salt, water. It's pretty simple, right? Yeah. You drew a blank. Hope there's not a blank space at your cooking station tomorrow. I hope not too. Hell yeah, I'm nervous. Good job, Becky. You know, 
but what can I do, you know? My only hope at this point is that somebody else screwed up worse than I did. Next up, the girl who had a huge advantage coming into this challenge. Becky, <clears throat> let's go. Hello, judges. The only person in the competition who had a deep... By the way, saying that is kind of funny for me, the cowboy hat thing, because I wore a cowboy hat on a plane when I was flying back from Texas to Los Angeles. I'm that guy. Like, it's like people like me that wear cowboy hats outside of, you know, Texas. Deep fryer. Right, what is that? I did a tempura style fried shrimp topped with yuca chips and then a curry and shrimp stock infused broth. God damn, she popped off. Okay, Becky. Even though that doesn't look too fried, what happened there? Um, it's delicious. The shrimp you've nailed, it's refreshing. It's got that kind of sort of lightness to it, um, which is not generally associated to a fryer. Good job. Okay, nice. associated. All right, next up, please, Christine. I decided to go with an Indian-inspired flatbread. I topped it with some chicken that I rubbed with curry powder and topped it with a fried egg. We haven't really seen a lot of Christine lately. The idea that if it grows together, it goes together. All these flavors found in the same parts of the world. I think it's a very well-conceived and constructed dish. Thank you. Next is Monty. I know that Monty is a single mother and she does raise her kid and all this stuff, but this isn't like the best budget cooking mom's show, you know? She's not a master chef. How do you make soup on a pizza stone? I roasted carrots on a pizza stone and I pureed them. I made soda bread on the pizza stone as well. I thought about what I would cook for my son and I on a rainy day and I would cook soda bread with a soup. I love the soda bread. Thank you, sir. Let's go! It has a depth of flavor. Every ingredient makes sense. And I would like to, on a rainy day, eat that whole bowl. Congratulations. Dude, thank Good. you. I feel like Joe has a soft spot for Monty, by the way. He's always kind of nice to her. Remember when he was like, the sadness in your cooking. When did you break up with your husband? Well, he's, he's missing out on some delicious, delectable delights. Soup's delicious, but the bread is phenomenal. Great job. Soda bread. I mean, are you really Look at the Irish. doing this because you know it, or is it absolutely a fluke? bloody I'm not brilliant? A fluke, sir. Well done. Thank you, sir. Pretty well done. Thank you, guys. It feels amazing, obviously. And I really wish my son Danger was here so I could try to make him eat some carrot soup. Aw. All right, next up, please, David. It's still sus to name your son Danger, but other than that, everything is chill, you know? What did you make? I roasted the potatoes in the pizza stone. I did the bacon in the pizza stone, and I did the uh, lobster on the pizza stone as well. This looks really bad. It almost looks like some kind of soup, but then you got like this big old long piece of bacon that looked like it just fell in it from someone's breakfast plate. Yeah, it's a mess. Come on, Dave. I'm supposed to eat this? Really? Let's go. Oh, God, it's David Rotinez, dude. You know, watching you cook this was just a letdown. We're going to go from 11 down to 10. And this is what you bring? Go. This is the most important dish of your life, guys. You see this? This is Oh my god, he's showing it to everyone and oh he dumped the plate! Oh no! Alright, well that's that's GG's for David, bro. This is not good. Holy I am going home today. Bro, he cut Gordon out of even trying it, dude. That was Joe Alted, dude. He did that is his signature move. He did the signature slam. Or he, he slam dunked everything, including the fucking dish, into the trash. 
We're gonna go from 11 down to 10. And this is what you bring. I mean, that is disrespectful, though. That is disrespectful. It's straight disrespect. You see this? This is. That's some shit. That's literally some shit I would have made. That's some shit I would have fucking made, like, quickly, whipped up on the spot before I started the stream because I was really hungry. You know what I mean? Dave Martinez is, like, the biggest joke. As a matter of fact, I mean, why is he even here? David, why are you here, Tali? Monumental Content, dishes. motherfucker. You and guys you are just... both on the same vein, dude. Both of you just are providing content. You both suck, and you're both incredibly delusional and think you're actually good. It fell a thousand foot with nothing underneath it. It's a great shame. You know, sometimes planes crash, and that's what happens. Tali. Okay, bro, he's making he's making references now. I, I'm beginning to sense some. Oh, come just, on, dude. Come on, back. David. Look My man, first he, first he poisoned the military. I try to put it all in one space. It's not in one space. It's from there all the way down and all over the place. Look at the cupboards. I don't. I By don't. the way, that's straight up the absolute worst, absolute worst fucking analogy that you could ever use. Like, sometimes planes crash. First of all, it's incredibly rare. And when it does, it's like major fucking news because it's not supposed to. What the fuck kind of... You could have used anything else, dude. Okay, I need to see this again. Sorry, I need to rewind and see this. Stay there for a minute. Oh, get some. Just, just step back. Look at the mess. I try to put it all in one space. It's not in one space. It's from there all the way down and all over the place. Look at the cupboards. I don't. I Let don't. me tell you one more thing. Okay. If you were in any of our kitchens, yes, sir. you'd have been fired six months ago. Yes, sir. <sighs> that is a disaster. Tally, bring it up. What happened, Tally? Tell him how it was your artistic vision. You know what I mean? It's just... It's always brightest before the storm, you know. Uh, the storm is coming, you know, whatever the fuck he was, he's been saying. What's up? Say it, dude. Come on. All right. Damn, bitch, you cook like what this. What is that? It's a flatbread with duck and three cheeses of provolone, mozzarella. I made a sauce out of creme fraiche, uh, chives, onion powder, garlic powder. And, and it's served on a bed of raw flour, right? That was not my intention. My intention was to roll out my, roll my flatbread and get it into the oven. I thought raw flour was an instant elimination. Yep. I mean, here's the thing. You work in a mess, you produce a mess. I'm struggling to identify what the hell you're doing. I really am. And the last dish. Tanya, please. Hi, chef. Hi. What is it? I wanted to do something uh, Mediterranean, so I did an olive cumin seed oh, flatbread. Oh, let's go. Uh, roasted lamb lollipops, a roasted vegetable. Let's go, queen. And a roasted garlic. Yogurt. Pop off. I hope she doesn't get eliminated with this. That's, that looks. Yeah, the dough's still doughy and very raw. Oh, no. Lamb does look a little overdone because it was you raw. You can't be happy with that. I'm lost for words. Dreadful. Dreadful. Bro, Becky. Pop. Becky in the background is like... Fucked them up, dude. She went... -ta 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 -ta. She was like, I know the advantages aren't that big, but god damn, I'm gonna use it. Holy fuck. She literally rip a like eight people with one fucking... It's with one cool. choice. Bitter. And the lamb is dry, then anything she shoved it in the pan. Oh, dude, come on. Are these raw whole garlic cloves in here? Racially motivated. Yeah, it's raw. When you go out to eat, they give you whole cloves of raw garlic to eat? No, chef, they don't. Are you kidding? We're here to judge a contest. We're not here to eat raw flour or raw garlic. When you give us crap like that to eat, it gets to be almost kind of personally offensive. You understand that? Yes. Not only am I advising you step up your cooking game 
also advising you to have a little respect. With all the dishes tasted, the judges must choose tonight's three worst dishes. From these, at least one home cook will leave the Master Chef Kitchen. Man, that was a disaster. I mean, honestly. <clears throat> huh? Tanya, Tally, Who would Mike. have thought that that would have been so hard? Extraordinary. Pizza <laughs> stunned. I got my ass kicked on this one. I mean, straight up from the beginning. I didn't try to give him no excuses. I just screwed up. And I probably deserve to go home for it. God, they're harsh on you, man. I wish I hadn't done this dish. So the Just... bread was way undercooked? What'd you roll it with? I didn't. <laughs> Tanya, Tanya. But yours didn't go in the trash. Damn near close. It's so bad for Tolly, man. I tore him up. Oh, man. That Wait, who got kicked? Screw us over on. <laughs> That was not what happened. Have they not changed? Oh, they it have was crap. Okay, garlic crab. Choose to leave the mask. Oh, Tanya. Stunned. I got my ass kicked on this one. I mean, straight up. From Sorry. The I didn't try to give him no excuses. I just screwed up. And I probably deserve to go home for it. God, they're harsh on you, man. I wish I hadn't done this dish. So the just... bread was way undercooked? What'd you roll it with? I didn't. <laughs> Tanya, Tanya. But yours didn't go in the trash. Damn near close. It's so bad for Tali. Do you ever wonder if what's dreadful to them would be good for us? Is a great question. No. And the reason why I say that is because these are amateur chefs, dude. I'm willing to bet they even ham it up and say something is delicious when it's not even delicious. Is they're trying like experimental ass fucking dishes and shit? Are you kidding me, bro? Have you ever like gone to a friend's parent's house and like your friend's mom is just not good at cooking? That shit can be so hit or miss, dude. Especially when it's like home cooked stuff too, because like they might not get the portions right. They might have like a weird palate. You know what I mean? So amateur, amateur chefing is, is a dangerous game. Okay. Becky picked a good one. Screw us over on. <laughs> I'm willing to bet they probably ham it up and say dishes are delicious more than they say it sucks. Best performance in a challenge. But there were some highlights. One great dish that stood out for all the right reasons. Felix, 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 that Felix, Felix. Belongs to Felix. Well done, Monty. Thank you. Oh, soda bread. If you think I'm a fluke, I am going to laugh my way all the way into the MasterChef crown. Now, to the worst dishes of the night. Why didn't they show Felix's dish? The kind first of dish. Up. Please step forward. Tanya. Oh, ho, ho. I don't want to go home. I want to make the top 10. The next disastrous dish. Cowboy Ben. David, please step forward. And Cowboy Ben. I think I will be walking out of the doors here in T minus 10 seconds. Oh, wait, Tolly, too. Fuck, there's Tolly. Never mind. And the third. Bro, Ben got so lucky. Terrible dish. Tolly's had a lot of chances, and I feel like his nine lives are pretty much up. Please, God, pick Tolly. Please Cowboy Mike. Forward. Cowboy Mike. Oh, come I'm on! I'm going to give up hope at this point. But yeah, that's fucking bullshit, dude. This is anti-white racism, okay? Motherfucker literally served them raw flour. Last season, if you served them raw flour, they would get up and kill you. Like, I feel like they would beat your fucking ass with, like, one of those rolling pins. If you ever serve them raw flour this season, what is happening? Like, why does is does does, does Tali know someone in the in the production team? How the fuck is he not out?
how is he actually still here? So many chefs that are better than Tali that have actually made edible things have gotten kicked from this fucking show. And this motherfucker has the most insane plot armor and he's still in the game. I know that, you know, there's a good chance that I'm possibly going home. Tanya, David, and Mike, you know those dishes were bad. Mike, step forward, please. You entered this competition on a horse, but your food made the real impact on us. Blew us away. And we were expecting you to continue that climb and, and outsmart your competition. But that pizza stone was abused. It's time for you. To head Bro, Tali's got the dream seed, dude. Back. Mike, step forward, please. A 40-year-old father from Georgia that has no. a big heart, but that pizza stone was abused. It's time for you to head back to your station because there were two dishes that were worse than yours. To Georgia. Your time is done in Master Chef. That's what? Thank, Thank you. you. You keep that food dream burning high. Thank you very much. Okay, th this Thank doesn't make you. any sense. I was literally waiting for like a double debate to hit Tali in the end. Like have all three of them fucking get up there to just be like, oh, Tali is actually the real bad guy. That doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever, dude. I'm losing my mind a little Sister bit. Proud too. Thank All you right? very much. No, it's a big Thank deal. You. All right, you did great. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave, who's gonna win Master Chef? Without a doubt, Chef, this woman cooks better with no sight than all we do with vision, so I'm saying Christine. Christine. Thank you. I can't Mike. wait to buy your book, babe. Oh damn, he to said bye. This far is Bro, he like fucking works at a car dealership in in Cobb County, Georgia, and he's over here being like, yeah, that's right, babe. It's a huge accomplishment for me. I lost my sister in September, and I was doing this in her name. I'm very proud. I know she's proud, and I know my family at home is, is extremely proud. They're After his appearance, Mike released his own range of spice rubs and has a game table TV YouTube channel focusing on hunting, food, and also features his family. Smile. To welcome me with open arms. I know they'll be glad to see me. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The top ten best amateur Woo! cooks. In Bro, that makes no sense, dude. That makes no sense. They kicked out Cowboy Bob, whatever the fuck his name is, over David, whose food got spat out and thrown in the trash. And over fucking, uh, again, Tali, who made food that literally is not edible. Okay? Raw flour, I thought, was like designated automatic elimination. How did they hit the guy who, who made... Uh, he's so scripted. This is definitely scripted, dude. I mean, it's like, it's straight up. It, there's definitely a little bit of a script there. No shot, okay? In the country. Come on. How did I make it through this? How does that feel? Really great. <laughs> Insane. Well, that 10 is about to become the top nine. Double elimination? What's what? Wait, where did that come from? Tanya, you are the youngest in the competition. No, it's not Tanya. And sometimes you cook like you're one of the most mature. But that pizza stone threw you way off. It's not Tanya, it's David. Chef. David, passionate, talented, but it was just puzzling. Watching you cook, it was just a mess. The person leaving MasterChef. 
I'm heading back home. Dave Martinez has to go. He has to. Is. Tanya. What? Your time is done. Thank you. In Master What? Chef. Are you fucking joking? Bro, they spat out. What is happening? Is this opposite season? Bro, my man made bacon soup, dude. He made bacon soup. It was tossed in the fucking trash. Yo. Okay, okay. Here's what is going on. Okay, here's what's going on. Okay, I've, I've decided. I know what this is. I feel like they do this on purpose to create controversy. And then people are like more angrily watching or something. There is no shot. There is no fucking what? <laughs> what the fuck happened? Like how? How did this happen? Polly and David should have been kicked out on a double elimination on this round. Dude, they're literally keeping... Dude, they're literally keeping the dumbasses as pets. They're you. No, 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 no. That's it's kind of fucked up. Especially if you're gonna do a double elimination, it's fucked up to the actual good chefs. Trust me, you may not have your hands on the title, but what you have got is a future in food. Thank you so much. You're That's bubbly, bullshit. You're exciting. You're very young. After Mastership. We did Mike. What about uh, Tanya? Continue. Tanya Noble was a student from Austin, Texas. She was eliminated in MasterChef Season 3, Episode 10 after her dough and garlic were raw in her dish. After MasterChef, Tanya moved to Australia and studied cookery and hospitality. She's worked in a number of restaurants and events roles and was a restaurant consultant. She is an aspiring presenter and has a profile on Star Now. Tanya is currently a personal chef. What's Star Now? On that journey, because you connect with food. Thank you. Well done, my darling. Thank you so much. Great having you. Oh my god, I cannot believe you made it. I can't either, motherfucker. You're not alone in that. This has been a crazy journey. Before Master Chef, I was so scared to acknowledge what I wanted in life. And coming here, it just shows me that you take big risks, you get big rewards. And the fact that I made it this far into the top 10, it's massive. I'm so proud of myself. That was bullshit. That was actually bullshit. Like, she wasn't that good, but there's way worse. Okay, one more, one more. 